Welcome Lawheads to another 40k video as we look through the Akashic Reader at the timeless depths of the warp where all stories are already written. Now witness the weapons and other technology left behind by the old ones. Their legacy, even in defeat, is impressive. They were a lizard-like race who honestly shaped and left behind a lot more technology than I initially thought. First up is a recent addition, the Dissonance Engine, made from the Tchulka, the Ouroboros and the Plaquehat. Each device has their own abilities. The Tchulka, which I'm most familiar with, is a sentient device that from the art looks like a boiling sauna or jacuzzi, with some sort of warp entity within it, which talks through a servitor and seems suspiciously friendly, a stab behind each smiley word. One thing we know about the first ones is that they really knew the power of the warp. So this engine would make sense, perhaps some play on how chaos add demons to their inventions. But instead of a demon, a warp spirit that lets the engine have some self-preservation or opinion, some desire to serve, or maybe it's some psychic echo of the first ones themselves. We know the lion conversed with the engine during the heresy, and it talked back. If it hadn't, it feels very in character for the secretive lion to talk to something that can't remember what he said or talk back to him. His metal, silent, confidant. Now these engines, when combined, can create bridges of space and time. Vashtar does this with the remains of Caliban, dubbing it Wormwood. So the combined devices are the engine that drives this cobbled together planet. And this device, this dissonance engine, ties into the next bit of technology we will discuss. And also ties into how the webway was created by the old ones. And I don't mean they made the webway, I mean what made the webway. In the Acts of Omen, the Lion, a little side paragraph enlightens us. The webway was originally fashioned by the old ones, using metaphysical tunnelling engines of unimaginable power. Its airy winding corridors and mist shrouded vaults exist in a liminal space that stretches between the warp and real space. So the distance engine is what drives these devices that created the webway by tunnelling through that gap between the materium and the immaterium. To help fight the Satan during the war in heaven, the old ones made many devices. So I think must have had great command of genetics, perhaps using advanced warp-powered gene looms that can create races tailored to the needs of the lizardy old ones. They come up with the Crocs, who are warriors that can never truly be wiped out, as is the same with the current Orcs, as they can always respawn from their fungus. Now the Necrons should have got a hoover with a finer nozzle, in my opinion. But that aside, the Orcs in 40k are thicker, or thicker, as they might say, than their croc ancestors. And the old ones also made Eldari, who they granted great warp powers to, in order to aid the old ones, who themselves were said to undertake great works of psychic engineering. One of those feats would be the Eldar gods, which we'll come to later. Another race that had a clear purpose, as the, the old ones gave to them, are the Jokoro, who are able to understand tech innately and like MacGyver, given enough pieces of battered machinery, they can make anything from a spaceship to a las cannon, with nothing but a Tupperware box and some strong sellotape. Also reminds me of the A-Team, who be locked up away and managed to escape in some DIY vehicle with guns on it. Creating these races to me indicates the old ones were diminishing in numbers, were desperate, and that's why they made the Aldari and the Jokero to fill the holes left by their own losses and also the orcs as a sort of infantry, a perma-meat shield. It's noted they made two of the races, but I will not go into them because honestly there's so little details. It's not quite worth discussing. Now to the Eldari gods, largely defined by a quote from Liber Chaotica Slanesh. We'll start on that quote now. I saw these first ones leave the Starborn Azur to return beyond the sky leaving their charges to grow by themselves, and how swiftly they did. Though millennia sped by, from one moment to the next, I saw these starborn as a grow into a mighty and sophisticated culture. I heard their name sung in a thousand psalms of joy and beauty. 
The Eldar, greater even than the children of Uthuan, at the height of their power, with a subconscious and natural born talent, they reached into the Chaos Realms and experimented with magic and sorcery, and their works were glorious to behold. But then the first ones returned from the darkness beyond the sky. Their strange and vast vessels were scarred and worn, their might dimmed and their shadows dispersing. For I knew that they fought an unending war with the gods that were not of the ether, gods of starlight, vampires of life. The first ones had returned to inspect the elder and judge whether they were fit for the battles that lay ahead. I watched as the first ones encouraged the younger race to reach further into the other realm and with their vibrant minds and passionate souls create beings of pure power to fight the star gods. But the battle was long and the first ones were now few and as their numbers dwindled so too did their influence over their young creations. Without the wisdom and might of the first ones to bind them I saw the elder warp beings evolve from sentient weapons into living gods the first true gods of the materium how i wept when the elder embraced them as such time moved onwards and i saw the rise of the bro heroes eldenesh and ulthanesh i just had a little insight there so i'll just pause things for a moment so the elder created their gods using warp engineering will dub it psychic engineering and then they began to worship them, which I think is a beautiful parallel to the Satan, who though they didn't create their gods, the Necrons are talking about here, though the Necrons didn't create their gods, they did not fall for them being gods in the end. They enslaved them, which is a nice contrast to how the Eldar did things. Anyway, we're talking about Eldenesh and Ulthanesh, the psychic bros, who alone, in the absence of the first ones, could channel the warp, gods and summon them into the physical plane next moving on from that interesting quote we ask did the old ones create the eye of terror it's hinted at it in this quote from bleeding stars a wound torn open by the old ones during the war in heaven stitched closed by his kind his kind meaning the necrons and ripped open again by the reckless eldari the place the humans call the eye of terror we don't know why the old ones opened it perhaps as a power source think of how the opening of the great rift has added abilities to chaos and the imperium boosting the emperor's power making more psychics emerge from humanity etc perhaps the eye terror was an attempt to boost the old ones abilities by making the warp more easily accessible allowing them to go full super saiyan the technology of the old ones also extends to literal weapons the empathic obliterator beautifully named, of Trazen, a collection-obsessed Necron Lord, was made in part by reverse-engineering Necron technology. And another note is that this device is kept in a dimensional pocket, which, if related to the device itself, is within the abilities of the Old Ones. And lastly and briefly, the Webway. It's a dimension that allows faster-than-light travel, travel, or fast travel, if you're familiar with gaming terms. This is what allowed the Old Ones to step around the galaxy between worlds and stay ahead of the Satan at first. It's set between the galaxy of the Materium and the Warp, the Immaterium, or the Empyrean, and it's now used by the Eldar in 40k, this relic of their once gods, creators. So overall, we've learned the Old Ones could do a lot, Manipulate and craft from the warp rather like the chaos gods do now, create countless races to their specific purposes, and control and shape the bounds of the warp and the materium to create a separate dimension, the webway. What do you think about the creative abilities of the old ones? Do you think they were a single race or a group of allied races that might explain their OP abilities, i.e. they can do everything? Now, just for a wrap up the video, there is an old ones device in the Caiaphas K novels, and I hope I'm saying that name right, but I haven't read them yet, and I'm waiting until I have read them before bringing you the video, so just to make a note on that. So please comment down below, and I'd love to know your thoughts.